Hey guys, welcome to the vlog. I just want to let you know right away that the Luna Moth restock is live right now. We have 200 sweatshirts available. We do have more blanks to embroider, but we have a good chunk for this first restock. So if you're interested in grabbing one, link is down below. So the orders are all packed and we're gonna go get groceries, but I'm just waiting for the mail pickup to happen first, then we can go. So I've got a bit of time to kill. I wanna unbox some goodies. I have some filming supplies that are hopefully gonna make my filming job a little easier. I've opened one of these already. This one, this was the one cut open. It's a little tiny adapter for your tripod so that you can easily click your camera in and out, like a quick release thing so you can connect your camera to a tripod and easily switch it to a different tripod or, or slap another camera on without having to screw the base in all the time. For example, my tall tripod, it has this little Q plate and so I need to screw this into the bottom of my camera and then I can put it on the tripod. But with this new system, this could just stay on the tripod all the time and this would be screwed into it. And then there's a little piece on top here that would stay screwed into my camera. <laughs> And it should be small enough that I can open the battery compartment and SD card compartment without having to unscrew this. Because this is too big, it blocks the door on the bottom of my camera. This would not. 
get it off. So I have three of them so that I can have one attached to my big standing tripod, one to my small handheld tripod, which is what you're on right now, and then one for this here, which is just like a straight arm. Look how small it is. So I'll use this little Allen key to screw it into my camera. So screw it in here. I saw Catnip get some of these. I don't know if they were the same brand, but I saw her get these like months and months and months ago, possibly even a year ago, I don't remember. And I've kept it in mind. I barely screwed it and I'm already at like max resistance. <gasps> these are not like retractable pins. Wait a minute. Maybe I can just remove them. It looks like if you had a really small hex, you could take these out. Okay, now it should screw in all the way. <laughs> so that's what that looks like. So this one's all set for my big tripod. And then here's my little one, which is very handy actually. And you just push this in to rotate the head. It's so handy. Because most tripod heads, you have to screw something to loosen this. Cool. <laughs> Handy dandy. Ooh, that's pretty easy to take out too. Do I need to push the lever down to put it in? Yes, I think so. And I can open up this door. Yes. Love that for me. Wait, where did this come from? Did this come with? Oh, yes it did. It had the small hex in there already. <laughs> I went and got this. Although, to be honest, this is kind of nicer. A little easier to use. This last one is gonna go on here. I have one of these already at my computer desk. It's just a little arm for your camera and it's the desk clamp variety. I do have one more that is a screw-in variety, but I'm not screwing that into this table, so I was like, I'm just gonna buy another clamp version. So this I'm hoping works to clamp right here, actually, on this table, <laughs> to be the three-quarter over-the-shoulder view for when I'm filming art and other things at this table, because I've mostly just been relying on my top down view and then I have a small tripod that can sit on the desk and give like a side side view but it's not like it's not like that three quarter side view over the shoulder view it's just straight up side view and it's kind of a pain oh here's the head I was like wait a minute this didn't look right <laughs> the head needs to be screwed on so it's telescopic you can adjust the height and then it's got the little ball head oh. Hopefully that's enough. Hopefully I don't need some kind of little arm or something for this. It's gonna be kind of in the way of my clear mat though. Although usually I don't have the clear mat on. It probably spends more time off than it does on. I feel like this is where I want it, but then I can't push it in all the way. This piece is in my way. Whereas if I clip it over here, I've got unlimited space, but then it's further away from the art area. So it's sticking out a little bit, but it should still hold. Now this thing on top. This side view camera gets used for other, like any live stream purpose too. Like if I'm doing a live stream elsewhere, I need to be able to just grab this camera and go. And I can quickly clip it to my other tripod and stuff. Plus sometimes I might want to put my vlog camera here instead of the live stream camera. So I can quickly unclip you, oh my gosh. Then clip you here and I can easily, oh I gotta spin this the other way. And get here, there we go. <laughs> Then I can easily vlog something right here. Now, the only downside to this is if I wanna just set the camera on a surface, it's gonna fall forward and sideways. It can't stand on its own at all without a tripod. That just means I gotta bring this little white one around with me more often. <laughs> I mean, usually I'm holding the camera or it's on a tripod. Overall, this will make my life easier. Now I have one more thing which is not very exciting, but it's exciting for me. It's a little L bracket for a tripod head. And this will just let me be able to flip a camera to be a different orientation. 
and I got it for this setup because when I mounted this boom to the ceiling I had it positioned where I would want the camera but I didn't factor in that the tripod head had to come out this way and then the ring light also has the big base that has to come out this way so the camera is way over here and I thought it was going to be over here so the camera is just too far this way. I've been dealing with it the way it is. I just have to pull the table out sometimes towards me. And if I'm zoomed out though, especially, then it's a problem. If I'm zoomed in, it's not so bad. I need this part straight down. Then this L clamp goes in like this. Shoot, is this actually gonna work? Maybe if I use it the other way, cause this is gonna hit this. But if I flip the L around the other way, <laughs> I'm looking at this now like, this, this isn't solving my problem. It's still gonna stick out forward. I guess it's cause I thought this would be flipped the other way, but it can't be because this is in the way. <sighs> Give me a sec. And fast forward, we got our groceries and then I cooked some food, which we just ate and I'm back at hanging this thing. What I want is this bracket on this side, but this is in the way. It's track, so like when you spin this, the camera's going up, but I don't want the camera up like that because then you'll see the outline of the ring light, even all the way forward. If I don't zoom in a bit, you see the ring of the ring light. And while we're here, I might as well dust all this. So there is one possible solution to this is to leave the bracket like this, which makes the mount kind of in the same position it was before, but with added flexibility. The camera would probably stick forward pretty much the same amount, maybe just a little bit further back. But what I could do is just push this back. It swings, there's a hinge at the top. I can push this towards the window and then angle this forward to compensate. Because before I had this fully forward, so I couldn't push it back because there was no way to compensate for that the camera would be at an angle looking too far down, if that makes sense. Like, instead of looking straight down, it would be looking back like this. So by using the bracket, I regain my range of motion with the ball here. So like this, the arm leaning back, and then I can tilt this right here to be a little forward so that the camera's looking straight down. So it's not quite the fix I wanted, but I can at least swing the arm front to back now and adjust using the ball head. Oh my God, you're sitting on the little arm I have clamped to the desk. This is a horrible spot for lighting though because I'm right underneath the light. But I just had a quick little story. I was about to have my last bits of food for supper, which was like a wide bowl, a wide shallow bowl. So I picked it up to kind of scrape the last of it into my mouth because it was like a rice and chicken thing. And it slipped. I still had my hand on it, but it just slipped enough that the bowl hit the counter and a chunk of it broke off and just shattered everywhere. <laughs> it wasn't even that big of a piece. Like it's maybe an inch and a half long and like a half inch down, like a little moon shaped piece that broke off the lip of the bowl. Little pieces everywhere. It cut my knuckle. So I vacuumed it all up and to empty the canister of the vacuum, you have to take the head off. So I went to take off the little nozzle. I did like the fine point nozzle. I went to take that off and I dropped the vacuum and the battery pack pops out. And then also the dirt canister pops open and all the pieces just fly all over again. And I had to vacuum them up a second time. So first I dropped the bowl and then I dropped the vacuum after I cleaned it up. So. I probably should not be handling this camera. I'm gonna end up dropping it. Okay, I'm gonna quickly get to some stuff that I thought I was gonna do earlier, which is some payroll stuff, like do the payroll and pay the payroll taxes. Cause like, you know, when you get a paycheck, your employer withholds taxes. That's like what it is. I gotta pay that to the government. And I'm gonna order the next sticker order, which I've kind of been meaning to do. I kept putting it off in case I was gonna make some new ones, but if I make new ones, I'll just order them separately. <laughs> okay, I opened up my stickers in Photoshop and printed off different sizes. I was printing it off to see how big they would actually look. First they were kind of small and then they were too big, so I went somewhere in the middle. And then what I do is I select them so that I can see the dimensions here. Cause when I go to order the sticker, they want me to input the width and the height. So going off this, I can input exact values. So they're all 2.75 inches for their longest dimension, except 
this Luna Moth because it's just so wide. It's 3.61 inches, which is this size here. So it's pretty big. These three will be for sale and this one's gonna be the freebie sticker. So I'm ordering 1500 of this one and then 500 of each of the other ones. The Luna Moths will be on white vinyl and then these two are gonna be on transparent vinyl. This one's gonna have the middle cut out. So it's gonna be like a little wreath you can stick onto something. Cannot get the side view Luna Moth to upload. It keeps getting stuck like this. The other three designs are uploaded, but this one's not working no matter how many times I try. I cannot get that file to work. I've tried resaving it out. I've tried starting the order from scratch. It will not upload for some reason. So what I ended up doing is I uploaded it to Google Drive and just sent the Drive link because you can do that instead of using their uploader. So three of them are uploaded with their uploader. One is a link, <laughs> but they're ordered, woohoo! So I have really good cable management back here and that's kind of a problem when you need to change things. If I want this cable to reach here, I need more slack and so I'm gonna have to go fiddle with everything because this needs to come up to the camera but wrap around to the left side to plug in so this is not gonna cut it and same for the power cable so these are all tied together and then they go into <laughs> these in the wall so uh, at least the power cable I think is under here yeah this is it right here so I can easily add more slack I've probably just got it all elastic together yeah, here it is. So I can easily add some slack to this. This one will be a little trickier. Okay, finally got enough cable slack. So that's what that looks like set up. It's nice and high, but out of the way. Cause with my small tripod, if I wanted a high view like this, the legs would be way splayed out. It's this one right here. Plus this one's a tipping hazard. Cause I have it this way so that you don't see the legs, but then it's like, so this is a lot nicer having this thing here. Hmm, now I'm thinking it would be nice if there was enough slack for this to fit behind the Copic case. I don't wanna take apart all my stuff again. <laughs> okay, not only am I gonna slacken the cables, I decided. <laughs> I also put this at the weirdest angle ever. Instead of just hanging straight down, it's hanging a bit this way. Cause ever since I added the leaf to the table, I can finally have no crack right in the middle but if it hangs straight down, we do see the crack off center. And I can't just push the table over because it's gonna get too close to that display case. So when I mounted all this, I didn't have the leaf in the table, but I can just angle it. It looks silly <laughs> at an angle, but I can make it work. Okay, I refed the cables. It was also important because I pushed the table closer to the window, so this had too much slack, so you could see it when you're standing out in the room. So now that's a little more taut. And these have a little more slack so they can wrap around to there. Okay, it's time to put the Coba case back together because it's two soda crates and I originally wood glued it together and it has since come apart. And so I was gonna wood glue again and then staple gun, but I think I'm just gonna staple gun. about whether or not I should staple the bottom. I would for sure have to cover this with some kind of thick cloth. I was gonna put cloth under it anyway, but I would need thicker cloth so the staples don't wear their way through. Franken case. Here's how it looks. It'll look better once this gets a fresh paint job. Cause obviously there was sticky stuff on here. Cause there used to be a cat bed on the top. <laughs> so the stickies are holding the blanket there. But then also have the red paint splatter from this one drawing I did years ago. The ghost tells me what to draw video. At least this will stay together. I clamp right here every time I pick this up because it's two separate pieces. But now they're together again. Okay, for the bottom edge, I just glued on some foam. 
using E6000. Because every time I slide it around, I'm scared I'm gonna scratch up the table, so. Nice foam. It's now Tuesday. I stayed up pretty late in my art room last night. It was almost one o'clock when I went to bed, but I was just in the organizing mood and just tidied up the room and got stuff off the floor onto the shelves. I unpacked the Luna Moth notepads from their boxes. So it's looking pretty good down there. I can show it the next time I go down there, which was almost right away. I need to grab my list of Copic markers I need because I'm about to go to the art store to finally buy those markers and refills and hopefully two empty barrels if they have them. And I would like some replacement brush nibs. So I'm gonna go to Kensington Art Supply for that. I've been there once since I moved here and I quite liked that store. I don't know how much I'll film because I'm gonna be shy and I'm in the direct sight of the checkouts when I'm at the Copic rack. <laughs> and I might grab a few open stock Prismacolor pencils if they have any. Okay, here's the art room. I'm filling on my phone right now because I thought I would head out. Now I'm like, actually, let me show this stuff. So the sketchbook or the, no sorry, the notepad boxes are all down here next to the sketchbooks. And then the Luna Moths are all right there. And there's more stuff on this side, the boxes of them. <laughs> oh, mushy. I have some recycling to take up still, which is right there. The surfaces are a lot more cleared off in here. Oh, I gotta fix the curtains. <laughs> I have to deal with that corner technically still, but it's looking a lot better. And I put this thing here. <laughs> Isn't that cute? The little set of drawers. Cause previously I had this sitting there. So I moved it. I don't know if I want it here or if I want it more like down there in the corner here. I'm undecided, but it's looking pretty good. Also, my monitors are still on. That reminds me, I got to double check if I have another proof to approve for Sticker Beaver. This was the proof I got, but I want the inner part of this cut out too, like a donut. And they said they don't do that for their die cuts. I would have to get it as a kiss cut sticker instead. So that's what I'm going to do. And they're going to send me a new proof with the kiss cut. Okay, it looks like it's not there yet, so I will head out. This is the back camera of my phone with the wide angle view. Woo. <laughs> and here's my list of stuff to get. Prismas, I don't know. It's like, I'm at the art store. I go like once a year, so I should stock up. Maybe a white. How am I doing on black? There's this one, that one. I mean, you can't go wrong with black, white, and navy. Because yeah, this is one of the newer navies. I can tell by the the silver writing on it. And it's pretty small, but also this light pink here. This pink I could use one of, and I've been loving that mint color. My pencil is still really long, but I'm like, I should grab another one of this. Light green, it says. Okay, I think these are the ones I'm gonna get right here. I'm gonna take a picture, but I've also written them here. Okay, I'm here. Prismas. The Copics are all behind glass now, so I'm gonna have to get help. Clean. Nope. I just realized I didn't mean to write down the green, but that's one of the ones I want. Where the heck is sand? Oh, it's right here. This lead caught my eye. The pink lead for a two millimeter pencil. So I would need a two millimeter pencil. Okay, I found some. I don't know if there's other ones, but these are two millimeter. Does anything get some pink lead to go with it? They opened it for me. Okay, I have one out of stock and then one just doesn't exist. I think I meant to write RV00, so I'm taking a chance and I'm buying it. <laughs> that refills. <laughs> Be 
TV triple zero. Ooh. All right, I'm going into the car wash. Yes, I know my windshield's cracked. I'm not getting it replaced till after winter, okay? Because I'm just gonna get another crack. My windshield wipers stop. They're off, but they have a sensor. Hopefully, that doesn't matter. <laughs> oh my god! Is my car supposed to be powered off? Okay, I just shut the car off. Is it supposed to be off or not? I don't know. Also, why is my wheel turned? Ooh, look at all these goodies. <laughs> oh yes, here's the haul. I didn't even look around the rest of the store because I knew I was already spending way too much money. So I did not look around. <laughs> I did look at the aisle where the pencils were and found some stuff there. I got four of these eraser toppers for pencils. Ah, there. <laughs> I got four packs of nibs, cause I wanted at least 10, and they come in packs of three. I got two of the pink leads, and then one pencil to go with, which is right here. <laughs> this has some lead in it already, but I'm gonna replace it. How many are in here? Yeah, two, that's what I thought. There's only two pieces in each, so that's why I got two. Although it probably will take me quite a while to get through two pieces, but that's that. The Prisma colors are in here. I got one color that was not on my list, just another pink. Because just the true pink was on the list, but I also picked up blush pink. Other than that, I just stuck to the list, plus the green that I forgot to write on the list. And I got two whites. Cause I just go through them so fast. So grabbed two and then all the markers and refills. So I got most of what I was after. They were sold out of the V22 marker. So that's the only marker I did not get. I think when I wrote RV01, I meant RV00. I really hope that was the case. I think it is. Cause I'm pretty sure that's one of my uh, anniversary markers. Let me go look. Yes, that was one of the anniversary markers. So yeah. <laughs> almost was freaking out there then I'm like wait a minute I don't think there is an RV01 I googled it and only R01 came up so yeah just missing V22 and I got my two empty barrels because they had those where are they wait when he counted these I wonder if the empties cost the same as a filled marker I would assume not but I forgot to mention that two were empty because <laughs> he just counted the markers and counted the refills and eh, whatever the barrel itself is probably most of the cost. The ink is probably negligible. My first ever empty Copic barrels, look at them. Nothing written on it, whoa. So I wanna use these to make variants of E04. It's like a pinkish brown. And so I wanna dilute some E04 in one marker. And then in the other one, put in E04 and then add a darker color to darken it so that I have a lighter version and darker version of this color because it's just so cute. Like a really dusty pinkish color, right? So that's what the blank ones are for. Now for the refills, I'm missing more because they don't have every single refill color. They carry every Copic color, but not every refill. So I'm missing one, two, three, four, five, six refills, but I made out pretty well otherwise. I got all of these except for six. And if you're curious how much this all cost me, it was $820.59 Canadian. Yeah, 39 refills, 34 miscellaneous. Yeah, that tracks because I got 32 colors plus two blank ones. I guess I can fill out my chart some more. Like This could be tomorrow's stream activity, but at the same time, I kind of want to just do art art in tomorrow's stream. swap which tripod you're on oh my god that's so easy bye baby hi did you miss me <laughs> oh my god i didn't look at the price of this pencil when i bought it 2750 <laughs> what the hell it's just plastic too like it's not even, it's not even anything fancy what the heck one of these gonna fit on it. I'll force it on. <laughs> Ooh. 
whoa. Wait, don't I have a pencil like this? No, I think it's even thicker. I think it's thicker than two millimeter. Let me check. No, it's two millimeter. What the? <laughs> I forgot I had this. <laughs> and this looks nicer too. What have I done to myself? Although at least I could keep one with regular pencil lead and then one with pink. New proofs came in with the middle cut out. Yay! It will cost a little bit extra to get it with the second cut, but that's okay. It's the way I want it. I have a problem with this. This is my clean list. I had a messy list that I was filling out as I was going through everything, and I had specifically listed which of the brushes needed replacement nibs, and I don't think I have that anymore. <laughs> but I do have the vlog footage, so maybe I'll go through that to figure out which ones need the new nibs. But yes, I just made a TikTok of the haul, paid that sticker invoice, and now I'm gonna fill in the chart. Yeah. And these can go in here. Oh God, they're gonna be too long. <gasps> <laughs> they're gonna have to lay diagonally. It's Cause they'll be sharpened down soon enough. I'll use them, I'll use them. They're my most used colors. So. <laughs> oh my God, I love my new camera setup and I love how easy it is to snap my camera in there. <laughs> This is for filling in the refills for the markers. I'm just fill it in. I have everything except V22. Sad. Oh, that's a nice dusty purple too. Oh, that's tragic. Well, let's begin. <laughs> BV Quad Zero, will we really see this one at all? And yes, I have the refill, but not the marker. I think I bought the wrong one last time. I think I meant to grab BV Triple Zero because I had the marker, but I just did not have the refill. Now I do though. Okay, and then after I fill it in, I can just stick it in my Copic thing. My purple slot on my Copic case is very full. <laughs> I might have to do some rearranging. I could put it next to the blues because then I can split it into two cubbies because it's, they're squished. And now that I have some new ones, <laughs> I don't think they're all gonna fit. Oh, this is V01. I meant to grab BV01, but you know, we're here. We're here. I also have a refill for this one. I think this was a, anniversary marker. I think all the ones I have refills for that are not colored in, that's what the deal is, except for that BV Quad Zero. <laughs> I feel like there could be a V Double Zero. That's what's missing here. And there's kind of a big jump between Triple Zero and Zero What? BV01. BV01 is not on my list, but it's also not colored in. <laughs> Wait! But it's on my refill list. No way to have BV01 right here. Maybe it's just dry. Okay, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is, okay. God, maybe let's not go based on what's missing from the chart. Maybe let's just go based on what I have because this is way too confusing. R81. Can't believe I'm still one marker short. I should order it tonight because otherwise I'm gonna forget and it's gonna take me like a whole year to order it. <laughs> Order the missing marker, and then I guess the six refills that I was after, because I can't remember which ones I urgently needed versus which of these I just wanted just because I'm stocking up on more refills, you know? So I should just get them all, just to play it safe. And Kensington Art Supply does not have an online shop, at least not right now. You can only get the stuff in person, so I'll have to order them from elsewhere. YG05 and YG06. Also, why do these all three look like the exact same color almost? YG05, 06, and 07. Okay. 
especially 06 and 07 look really similar. Ugh. Well, I guess it just means I won't need a refill for a long time because these are basically <laughs> interchangeable. Some of the colors I'm excited for are these. They just look so good based on the caps. BG34 Bluebell, BG93 Green Gray, and then BG72 Ice Ocean. Just nice desaturated kind of colors. V28 Eggplant. I'm a little disappointed because the cap looks more purpley than the swatch and kind of darker. The V28 looks a lot like BV25. They are very similar. I was hoping this would be a bit more purpley, but it just looks gray. Y18 and 19 are really nice. Just nice regular yellows. This threw me off for a second. This dark blue green color, it's called bronze, but I'm assuming it's like oxidized bronze. <laughs> You'd think one of these would be called bronze. Okay, I'm a little confused. And I think past Bailey was also a little confused. Some of these were not colored in because my marker was dead and I did not have a refill. And yet I did not write those on my list of refills to get. Like some of them I did, but some I didn't. These three colors here, they're dead, but I don't have refills for them. Like what was I thinking? So I've added them to the list down here. I've also added E42 because I just really like that color. And I have the other E40s as refills and this is one of the medium ones. So I just really want to refill for that one. But like what? Was I just not paying attention when I made this? Like the Y00, I got the refill on my list. The BV01, I did put the refill on my list, but for three of them, I just did not. But I do have to order some online so I can just order them then. But the chart's gonna have to remain unfilled in for those colors, cause I just can't fill it in yet. They're just that dry, they're that dry. I don't even want to attempt it. It's just gonna smear dark crusty bits. Anyway, now I'm gonna go through the refills and just color in the squares to see what I have. I was just thinking how beautiful R56 looks, just such a great muted pink. And then I was like, wait, this looks a lot like E04. And the caps are like identical colors. And I was like, how come I've never noticed this color before really? But that's because my R56 looks like this. <laughs> These look completely different. But also I kind of want to swatch this next to the E04. Okay, they're not the same, but they look so close. Look at that. <laughs> this one looks completely different. Not even close. I would say the actual color swatch is somewhere between these two. Like neither is really wrong when you hold it up to it. I haven't devised any new refill storage. I'm torn about what to do because they do fit nicely in these drawers but I might need dividers to keep them from falling over. But I'd probably want to move this closer to my Copic table then because it's annoying having to get up and come over here for refills. Whereas if I just had it sitting under my table, like maybe on this side where that dark basket is right now, that would be a little more convenient. But I'm also like, should I just get something new? But look, the refills fit perfectly. They just clear. <laughs> I would just have to make some dividers maybe here across and then this is all one big compartment and then another similarly sized section something like that and then I could just group them by color which is how they originally were but they've fallen over and gotten mixed up so they're not really organized anymore what in the Madeira is going on I don't get to see the shipping rates at checkout <laughs> hell I'm ordering from Blick because they have everything I need. I was on some Canadian art supply sites and they only carry very limited selection of the refills. So I'm ordering from Blick to just get it all, but I'm not gonna know the shipping fee. <laughs> it better not be UPS Express worldwide. I've left out a few refills because I have some markers I do want to refill right away. 
I've consulted the vlog footage to get my list of nib replacement colors. So there are 10 of them, but I didn't write down Color with Splendor, but that is one that needs replacing the... This is not even... Oh my gosh. That's not even the one I thought I had out. <laughs> this one! It's so stained. The color runs mostly clear, but it's... I just want to replace it. It's got a little bit of blue in it. I keep avoiding it. And so uh, I've been using this one, but this one's also kind of stained. I do have enough nibs to replace both, but then I'm out of replacement nibs entirely. And I don't know if I necessarily need two colorless blenders. Like this can be my little dirty one to clean up stuff. And then this can be the one I use for actual blending once the nib is replaced. Did I ever have those nib gripper tweezers? I know they existed for Copics, but did I ever own that? Thinking not, unless I forgot about it and lost them. Let's use some paper towel to grip the nibs. This one's mostly colorless, but other ones are gonna get ink everywhere. Should I refill this? Probably. <laughs> we'll just set it aside for now. <laughs> BV29 needs a new nib. Oh yeah, it's up here. Oh yeah, some of these BVs are already not in the BV slot. I definitely have to split them into two. Like there could be Vs and BVs in separate compartments because right now they share. Now this doesn't really look too horrible at first glance. This is one of the very first Copics I owned and it just like doesn't color nicely and the tip flops way too much. But I also don't get a crisp edge because it's kind of chewed up. <laughs> Wait, this didn't pull out the whole thing. It just pulled out the cap of the nib. Hey! This is the super secret ultra fine brush nib. <laughs> I need the super special Copic tweezers. What if I just... I thought I had it for a second there. Blech. Tastes kind of how you'd expect. Oh, it's going to the back of my throat now. No. Don't even have my water down here. Okay, I have this little gripper thing that is for my Wacom tablet pen to pull out nibs. I'm gonna try that because I feel like that would work better than regular tweezers, at least for this little thing. Maybe. Maybe use my strong hand. <laughs> BVO2, this one's also a chow, probably. <laughs> One of my originals. I mean, all the chows are original to some extent, but I did have an original 72B set of chows. I know for sure the BB-29 was part of that. I don't know about this one. This one's like floppier way further down than that other one was. I don't know why I'm testing them. I already tested them and made a list. It's like I doubt myself. Oh, well, there we go again. There we go again. This thing works well. It's just so small. Like, <laughs> it had a better handle on it. It would probably work a little better. R20. This is definitely in my OG 72 set. Very shredded looking tip. <laughs> like someone chewed on it. Yeah, this is probably not really going to work. I have to force it in there. Oh, because the gap's too small for this nib, but if I force it on there, it could work. But will it just do the same thing? No, I pulled the whole thing out this time. Woohoo! <laughs> Performing surgery on a Copic. Because see, if I grabbed regular tweezers, they'd be gripping the side of the nib. This is actually like pinching it like this, which is why I think it works well. 
that one came out in one piece too. Yay! Okay, it's been about 10 minutes since I put this nib in. Whoa! Fully juiced. I swapped sweatshirts to cook and I'm glad I left it on because it got a little splattery at the end. <laughs> I'm gonna go wash my hands and I'm gonna put some rubbing alcohol on a pad to try to wash all this off. Here's the before shot. <laughs> I think some of it went under my nails. Between the gel and my nail, cause some of this is getting old. So the undersides of my nails might stay black until I repaint them. And the after shot. I can't remember what angles I did. <laughs> It's a big improvement, but there's still a lot there. My nails are looking kind of gross. Like, look at underneath there. Not on my face. Underneath the nail. Probably should have worn gloves. Well, I think I'm going to go upstairs now and do some couch doodling. The results of which I will show you in the morning. I ended up just doing one page of doodling, which is this right here. I sketched some cats based on pictures I took of cats at my dad's farm one time. It was a good little educational exercise and I was also planning what I was going to do for my artwork for the next day for the live stream and I was going to include a speed paint of that in this vlog but this vlog is already so long. It's like 45 minutes. I'm just going to save the art for the next vlog. It's not even done but I'll show you what is done so far. <laughs> so cute. If you want to see the process of that it's in my live stream on the live stream tab of my YouTube channel. It's split into two parts because I had technical difficulties. <laughs> So the first part's the sketching and the second part's the coloring, but there's a lot left to do here. I was just trying to make it really colorful and have a lot of texture, so it's mostly marker with some pencil and Posca. I'll be sure to include the speed paint footage of that in the next vlog. It's seven minutes till treat time, so I'm getting pestered. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. First of all, <laughs> it's huge. <laughs> I don't even know if I can really be able to show this all on camera. I can't spread my arms wide enough. Look at this. Look at all the options. Oh my gosh. Although not